44 other states that allow early in-person voting, including Texas. Um, I think that's important. Texas now, I think, provides up to 17 days of early voting. Anybody who's qualified to vote can vote in Texas. And let me agree with you, Mr. Spakovsky. Um, I believe the Voting Rights Act has been one of the most important civil rights laws ever passed in this country's history. And um, the great thing is it has actually worked. It changed behavior in the states that were covered by the original formula uh, dating back to 1965. And it was the failure of Congress, which was intentional, to not update that formula to reflect current conditions, which the Supreme Court held unconstitutional under se Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act, correct? That's exactly correct. And the pre-clearance requirement, Section 5, is still on the books. The Supreme Court didn't hold Section 5 unconstitutional, did it? Uh, no, only the coverage formula because it was so out of date. And I don't know if you've looked at H.R. 4 or not. Uh, I'm, well, I'll take that back. I'm sure you have. But the coverage formula, which has been touted by some of the witnesses here, uh, would reach back 25 years and thus not reflect current conditions which is what the Supreme Court held would be the standard for the extraordinary measure of the federal government um, having the ability to pre-clear uh, voting law changes. Would that suffer, in your opinion, from the same um, problem that uh, Shelby County did, or a similar problem in that it did not does not just cover current conditions? Yeah, no, I think that is that is a problem. And furthermore, the, the other pro big problem with the formula is. Uh, if you have one particular town or city government in an entire state, and it's a problem, it, it engages in discrimination, it does so repeatedly, if it does it enough times, the entire state will become covered, even though all of the other local governments had absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with what that one county was doing, had no control over what they were doing, which shows that this blanket coverage, I think, is, it has severe problems under the Constitution. Would you go so far as to say that H.R. 4, if passed by Congress and signed into law by President Biden, would be unconstitutional? Yeah, I don't think it fits any of the conditions the Supreme Court has lined out. It's important for people to remember that when the Supreme Court in the uh, early 1960s, in a very important case, upheld Section 5, they pointed out that it was an extraordinary intrusion into state sovereignty that was justified at the time because of the widespread discrimination going on in places like Mississippi. That widespread discrimination today has totally disappeared. There, there's no difference between states like uh, Mississippi that was covered and other states that weren't, except in many instances, Mississippi actually has better turnout and better registration than the non-covered states. Members of the United States Congress take an oath to uphold the Constitution and laws of the United States. I'm tempted to ask you, but I won't, what do you think a vote for H.R. 4, which you believe is unconstitutional, would, com would uh, be consistent with a member of Congress's oath to uphold the Constitution and laws of the United States? I personally see tremendous conflict there, and I don't know how a senator or congressman could vote for a law which so clearly would be held unconstitutional under the Shelby County precedent, uh, but that is their decision to make. I would just point out, as many have, Senator Cruz and others, that the turnout in places like Mississippi, uh, Georgia, um, uh, Texas, and the like of minority populations far exceeds the chairman's state of Connecticut, where 49.6% um, 49 of African Americans were registered to vote and only 39% have voted. To me, I think the focus is perhaps in the wrong place. But Ms. Reardon, let me just ask you, uh, you've, you've documented how in your uh, testimony and in your uh, 
sworn testimony you gave us uh, that's in writing that's part of this record, how unelected officials at the Department of Justice basically had previously been given veto power over the elected representatives of the people in the states uh, to decide whether to pre-clear uh, these voting law changes or not. I, I just, Constitution aside, it gives me pause when somehow unelected lawyers at the Department of Justice get to determine what elected officials can do in the various states consistent with principles of federalism. But is there any doubt in your mind that the uh, pre-clearance requirement, if reinstated, could and probably would be used for partisan political purposes? Based upon my 20 years of experience within that section, I have no doubt that it will be used in a partisan fashion. Thank you. 